day, everyone, and welcome to the Bumblecast. I am your host, Ian the Bumble King Flynn, and joining me as always is the Bumble Quizmaster, Kyle Krause. Hello, I am here. It's so amazing. Glad you are. <laughs> are you really? Are you really glad I'm here? I'm not so sure. Well, I wouldn't have much of a co host without a co host, now would I? Uh, you could you could take some, one up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you do all the recording and all the hard work. I just sit here and talk in a microphone. Oh, is that how this a mic works? you provided? I, I, well, you know, I got mics out out the wazoo. So, <laughs> hey, hey, whatever you do in your own time, man, with your mics and your wazoo. I'm not doing it. Don't worry, not doing that. I'm. Just, it was. A, it was. A, it was a, a speech. Part of part of speech. It's a thing. It was not real. That's not what I do with my microphones. Like, ah, oh, shut it all down. Turn it off. Sorry to speak with all those mics up your wazoo. Anyway, I know, it really is. I mean, no, stop. We have a special bumblecast for you today, tonight, whenever you're listening. The Q and A fest. Big old shout out, bow out, curtain call to the Bumble King forums. Uh, before we even get started, I want to apologize in advance. I appear to be having some kind of allergic reaction, quite possibly to the down in my big winter jacket, so I sound like uh, Darth Vader after running a mile. <sighs> <laughs> so pardon me as I, you know, grunt and snort and huff vapor rub off to the side here just so I can try to talk to you people. Well, this is why we invented editing. <laughs> Can can only do so much for this voice. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, for those who don't know, I've been running a set of web forums on my website for 10 years now. Uh, Bumble King forums were the place to go if you wanted to talk to me directly and a number of other official creative peoples over the years. It was the unofficial, uh, unofficially official forum, or the officially unofficial forum, however you want to spin it. You know, not really licensed by Sega or by Archie. It was MySpace. But uh, we had a lot of professional people there. We had a lot of fun. And we covered a lot of Sonic over those ten years. Ten years, Kyle! Ten years! Holy crap holy. That's a long time. That is two handfuls right there. Wow. That's a lot. And all of them on pretty much the exact same build of PHP BB. Because... <laughs> I messed up something with the databases early on, transferring from various hosts, and it would not update, and it started to fall apart, and oh, the fact that it functions at all, I think, is a miracle. Yeah, it's PHP BB is fairly resilient, I will give it that. <laughs> Put it through the paces. Yeah. That, it's got, that, I don't think we ever did any kind of pruning or touch-ups to the database, and... There was, at one point, I figured this out, and I don't remember how many years into the run, at least five years, but I hadn't had any CAPTCHA applied to the uh, account registration. Ah, yes. All I did was, you know, manually approve them because I couldn't get the CAPTCHA to work. And found tens of thousands of spam accounts. <laughs> yeah. In the registry. Yeah. And, you know, spent days cleaning that out, came back a day later, and it was like I had never touched the stupid thing. So, uh, the search function doesn't work. Posts have disappeared. If you try to edit a post, it gives you an error until you refresh the page. It's a messy place, but folks love it for some reason. Uh, community comes together. It's kind of strange. But I'll tell you what, when I made the announcement that, that we were shutting things down, yeah. I was expecting more anger, I guess. Gnashing of teeth, as it were. Gnashing was. of teeth, yes. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and what I got instead was this outpouring of well wishes, first and foremost. You know, a lot of people saying, well, that's disappointing, but I understand why you have to do this. And stories upon stories of people who had made these lasting friendships and these major connections and had more than one uh, devout individual who said that just by interacting with the members of the forum, their eyes were opened up to a more universally accepting mindset, shall we say. And it was really, it, it took me aback because to me, it was you know the place where I could interact with fans. It was a sounding board. It was a place to 
you know, have a little bit of back and forth. But with hundreds of posts a day and across multiple subforms, there's no way I could keep track of it all. Yeah. So I honestly didn't realize just how much was spinning on around in this little cosmos I had created. So <laughs> it honestly did give me a moment's pause. I was, I did kind of go back and say, do I really need to pull the plug on this because of what we have created here? But unfortunately, it, it is time. The web forum format, it still works, but it's not the best use of online interactions that's available these days between Facebook and Twitter and all these other functions. The forums are just kind of a... It, they're almost too slow. They're almost too insular to really work with today's communications, unfortunately. Yeah, forums are a very... Uh, sort of a microcosm of a social network, but it's always been kind of... They've been kind of off to the side. It's a very it's a very web 1.0 thing in a web 2.0 world to use random buzzwords that everyone <laughs> hates. But I mean, it's very much like a this is a very much a 2000 heck a 1999 sort of thing. Web forms or web forms are web forms are pretty old school. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to spend as much time as I would have liked in the Bumble King forums, but the time I have spent there has been a lot of fun. There's some nice people there, and I'm there are some I'm, incredibly nice people. Yep, there. there's some definitely. You've definitely fostered a great community. I will say. And uh, while we're here, I did the shout out in the closing announcement, but I should do it again. A big thank you to everyone who helped me keep the place running for those ten years. Uh, Karigi Lee, also known as Aaliyah Baker, um, LBD Night Train from Mario's Hat dot com. That's Mario hyphen hat.com. And the Mega Man Network. And the Mega Man Network. Uh, John Gray, also known as Dub, who helped in his own special way. <laughs> well, he's Dub. Uh, he, he is Dub. That's about all you can say about <laughs> it. Uh, Toby, who, hilariously enough, we first met by him insulting me online. <laughs> <laughs> and I called him out on it, and we've had a lasting friendship ever since then. Hey, well, that works. And um, to JC Freak, who is like the only moderator we've had that was a user first, but just because of his exemplary uh, posting behavior and just being a nice guy, it's like, hey, can you look after the fan form for us? Because legally, we probably shouldn't be looking at it. He's like, yeah, sure. So thanks to everybody. Um, I know that. Over the years, there was a lot of back and forth and a lot of debate over how to manage some things in the past. It's it's a community. There were there are flare ups every now and again. Oh yeah, it happens. And uh, you can't really make those kinds of decisions in a vacuum. We did. We took great pains to craft the rules in a way that were public and that kind of protected the users from any ego on my end. It would be very easy to, you know, press a button and just boot anyone that, you know, I didn't like for whatever reason. Oh, you gave this issue a bad review? Deleted. <laughs> Which kind of defeats the entire purpose of an online community, so... I guess. I guess. Man. And, You're missing um, out, man. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to make sure that, you know, any accusations of abuse of power, we had the rules right there. We had all the proof right there. This is how we work by our rules. And sometimes that made reactions a bit slow. Sometimes that gave people a second chance when they we knew they would abuse it, but everyone, you know, got their fair shake. And it... It was a wild ride for those 10 years. We put a lot of work in. There's a lot of it behind the scenes, too, because yeah. a lot of the moderation was done through private messaging because we didn't want to make big public brouhaha's out of it. That's asking for drama. So a lot of it went unsung behind the scenes, especially you know the convention era when most of the mod staff would be doing a show and Night Train was the only one looking <laughs> after the forum when he had a chance. Oh, poor Night Train. He is a trooper. He's he done a lot. Truly is, yes. but he's a good guy. Yep. If you got a spare dollar, toss it towards his Patreon. Do that. But yeah, it's. I don't know. I feel like I'm drawing a blank. And how can you do that after ten years? You know, back when it was. Oh shoot! Did we even have a Sonic X sub forum back in the day? I don't even remember. <laughs> 
was 2006. When did you join the book? 2000, 2005, 2006. 2005, so yeah, not long after. It might have been just out of the general Sonic form, but has that the, the Bumble King forums launched when Sonic X was a thing. <laughs> not just the comic, but also the cartoon. Yeah. 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 Wow. That was a Bumble while King ago. forums have been around longer than Silver the Hedgehog. Hmm. It's up for debate if that's a good or a bad thing. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, do. I actually like Silver. He's pretty cool. Oh, Silver's tons of fun. Uh, yeah, he's he's cool. But yeah, it's it's just time though to move on. Use my time and resources for other avenues, other pursuits, and you know, interacting with the fans is still something I want to do. That's why I've got the Facebook channel, the Twitter channel, and the Bumblecast, of course. But there's a difference between. The occasional Q and A and the occasional, you know, bit of back and forth, and actually monitoring and policing and looking after people. Yeah, it's one thing to answer a question; it's another thing to weigh whether or not someone is purposefully trying to cause trouble to another person, or if it's a conflict between people not understanding one another, or if it's just a matter of differing opinions that just don't mesh. And it's a lot of work. Yeah. It can be morally straining. And I'm an old man, I can't keep up with that anymore. Yeah, forum forums and general communities are definitely really difficult to uh to wrangle. So, so you've done an admirable job over these last ten years. You and Thank you. you and the team. It's the it's you, it was definitely a team effort. Yeah, you have fostered a very a very good community. It'll be sad to see it go, but it's it's probably time. Yeah, I mean or have there been communities that have lasted 10 years that remain very functional to that degree? Very few. So, and already people are, you know, trading contact information and setting up other forums or moving on to greener pastures and setting up to move on. So the community isn't dying. It's just changing form. Yeah, exactly. And heck, who knows when we move on to web 4.0, maybe the forum format will return to being something viable. Who knows? Maybe. Maybe we return to dial-up forum <laughs> bulletin boards. That's what we need. The return oh, of bulletin wow. boards. <laughs> no, we don't need that. Please. No, no. Uh, I don't know if we've got those kind of like interactive hologram boards, like yeah. an Iron Man. Actual bulletin boards. Okay, that might be cool. I'll give you that. But as a send-off to the forum, I decided to do a special Bumble King forums only Bumblecast episode. So all the folks who were on the forum got to ask a single question, just so that we aren't here for the next three days. And uh, we'll burn through that, and that'll be pretty much it, because the forum itself will be closed down February 7th, and it will remain up in a read-only archive format, so that anyone who linked to it through a wiki can still use those links. And folks who you know might be gone for the first of the year for whatever reason, not have internet access, and come back and go, what happened to the forum? It'll be there for them to you know pick up and see what happened and save favorite posts or what have you. Yep, you can reminisce, go back and read read all about the uh, things, read all about the, all the great Bumblecast episodes. Exactly. Do it, or I don't know, listen to them too. Don't just read about them. Anyway. <laughs> so, my friend, Maestro of the questions, let us begin. Let's get into this. Some- Question. The Q&A fest. Yes. Let's get into some questions and action. I mean answers. <laughs> All right. First up, we have Deluna13. They ask, what was your personal favorite moment of the forum? Oh, I guess the most fun I had was when I had a feature on there for a while called Ask Ian. Not that you could get anything more egotistical than that, but you know, it, it was hey. to the point. Yeah. What, what do you think the show is? <laughs> Well, at least we pretend the show has got more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, there was one ask game where instead of me answering the questions, I wrote them all in character. So people asked questions to the various comic characters. You know, what do you think of this? What What was your history on that? Yada, yada, yada. And some of those I played straight. Some of those I went for the laugh. But that was exhausting mentally. Yeah. To switch gears between that many characters on the fly and do it, you know, rapidamente. But that was a lot of fun. I think that was the single most fun I've had on there. 
I think I went through that a couple of years ago, and yeah, it was awesome, hilarious. It was a good time. I still see people quote it every now and again. Uh, let's see. Next up, Dimsjack asks, is Lost Hedgehog Tales dead? No. Okay. No, good. it's not. Um, here's, the, here's the thing with Lost Hedgehog Tales. I didn't want to release it until I had it done, and it needed work. And what I should have done is just stick to my guns and waited until I have the time to finish it. Yeah. But there were, like, one or two people around online who kept nagging about it, kept picking at it, kept, you know, teasing about it. Oh, when are you ever going to get it done? Oh, he isn't going to do it. He lied. And I shouldn't listen to those people. I should just let it slide like anything else online. But no, I gave in. I listened. I bristled and thought, all right, fine. I'll do it episodically. I'll get it out maybe faster that way. And no, it <laughs> needed work. And breaking up episodically maybe, you know, helped organize it a bit. But it still needed time and it still needed work. And real life has to come first. Right. I mean, I do want to put it out there. The folks who are, have been so wonderfully patient with it and continue to be wonderfully patient with it, I think they're the ones who understand what this is. It's not what would have been. It's a novelty. It's what I would have liked to have done. Yeah. But these are not like the super secret files of things that were never got to see the light of day. These probably wouldn't have seen the light of day. And they certainly would have been released in the way that I will be putting them out there because they would have to go through the editor and the licensor and who knows what else would have gotten in the way. So it, if it's at most a glorified fanfic when you get down to it. I know people want that touch of official closure. And I appreciate that. And I will finish it, because I told them I would. It's just, it has to come after everything else. And, you know, when there's bills to pay, and there's work to be done, and there's illnesses to take care of, and yada, 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 that comes first. And what would I have written in the Little Hedgehog comic, and it's never going to happen, comes a way distant third, fifth, fourth place. So, short answer, not dead. Yeah, unfortunately, this... Lost Hedgehog Tales is not work for you. Well, it's work, but it doesn't pay. Right. <laughs> right. It's a lot of work, but it doesn't pay. So stuff that pays, you got to do that first. I did briefly consider setting up like a tip jar for it, because I know some people would be appreciative enough to throw a couple bucks my way. Mm -hmm. But then that opens up the door to so many potential legal problems. You know, am I profiting off this? Does it count as donation? And yeah. yeah, no, 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 no. If I'm going to make a buck off of people, it's going to be something original that I've done that I can actually call my own and put it out there. So you'll get your free, semi, quasi, distantly official Sonic ideas eventually. Eventually, they, they, they are coming. <laughs> Chapters two and three are drafted. I just need to make them better. All right, let's go on to the next question. This one's from Chaos Jam. Is that like a Shut Up and Jam reference? Shut Up and Jam Gaiden reference? It should be. That's the other thing that goes with Chaos is peanut butter. Oh, that's true. That's true. They ask, you've always been so great at addressing the fans' questions on this forum. Did any questions help influence the direction of the comics? I can't think of any one particular question that maybe would have steered things, but with the, the general Q&A and just interacting on the forum... And now on the Twitter and a little bit on the Facebook right now, it's a little slower than the others, but it's getting there. Seeing the people react to it um, more immediately than the fan mail that I get every now and again from Archie does influence how I plot things out in the future and how I plan to handle certain things here or there. Um, yeah, fans do have an impact on the book. Uh, but I wouldn't say the Q&A directly influenced, but it did have a general effect, I suppose. And going back even earlier to this, when I did the in-character Q&A stuff, that really forced me to look at the characters in a new perspective in some ways I wouldn't necessarily have considered initially. So, yeah, it did have some influence. I wouldn't say that it directly dictated the direction of the book, because I do look at more, more than just Bumble King for my feedback, but it did have some influence. All right. Mordom asks, Can I pitch a Sonic Dreams collection adaptation to the Archie Horror line? If I promise to write it for free, serious question. <laughs> You're free to pitch whatever you want, buddy. <laughs> but it's going to be attached to your name. <laughs> You're going to have to own it. Yeah. 
And if it comes to life, you're going to have to answer for it. It's kind of like my friendship with John Gray. Uh oh. <laughs> That's right. I said it. What you going to do about it, Dub? <laughs> I know I'm asking for trouble. <laughs> I know we're going to get him on the show, and things are going to things are going to go. Oh, that's going to be an interesting episode. Oh man, it's going to be a great episode. I, I hope we get to do it soon. Come on, come on, Dub. Ah, Sonic Dreams Collection. Uh, you have to get that past the licensing first. <laughs> Don't know. All right. Speed Lion has a question. The forum is closing, and as such, no new ranks will be reached. However, I remember you stating back in the day that you had already had new ranks in mind for above 10,000 posts. What ranks did you have in mind that haven't been reached? I think I said that back when the forum first started, so... um... (laughs) You don't remember? Uh, It probably would have been something like, something silly, like... Bumble Acolyte or Bumble Pope or something ridiculous. If you could post 10,000 things on that forum. Um, I do know that at one point I had this whole medieval ranking system going on. And at one point it's like, okay, once you get above that, you're almost family. But no, I, I don't think, I don't really remember exactly. It would have been something grandiose and ridiculous and of course. just plain silly. All right. We got a follow-up question, actually, from Lord Harl's Vassal. He's asking a question about uh, something we answered in a previous episode. Ian, you have said one could put Relic in a Tomb Raider slash Uncharted game, and she would be able to do the climbing, sleuthing, and presumably exploring. Mm -hmm. Is there any other Sonic comic character that you have a vivid idea of what they would like to play, they would play like in a game? Mm. He gives some examples. Um, I wouldn't say vivid... But a few ideas, like, I guess Antoine could play something along the lines of Sonic and the Black Knight, only better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tempted to say Metal Gear Revengeance, just in the sheer, ludicrous, over-the-top swordplay. But part of Revengeance's visceral feel is the ridiculous level of violence that is downplayed only because they are cyborgs and you're eating their you know, gelatinous robo-spines. <laughs> I don't know if if you toned it back if that would lose something, but I'm not a game developer, so if someone could make that work, you know, more power to them. Yeah. I uh, definitely could see Bunny playing kind of Zone of Ender style. Ah, where yeah. You've got this full range of three dimensional motion and you're blowing stuff up left, right, and center. And if you could capture that feel, that degree of freedom and bombastic action, I think that would be really cool. Yeah. And personally, what I would love for them to do is take Tails. I know he already has his own gameplay styles and whatnot, but just go ahead and bite the bullet and give him the Nights into Dreams style gameplay. Just go ahead and say that he's matured to the point where he can fly indefinitely and give him the time attack, loop-to-loops, and aerial stuff. And sprinkle in a little bit of platforming and exploring, kind of a la Tales Adventure. But get him out there in the clouds. Get him flying around. You're not using knights for anything right now, anyway. <laughs> You're not using tails right now for anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I know the, the question was more comic characters. I don't know how many of them would really fit gameplay-wise, even though I do try to think of them in that context. But what I would love to see right now would be a, a Knuckles the Echidna Metroidvania. Oh. Oh, 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 yeah. Plop him on Angel Island, use the basic geography out of Sonic 3 and Knuckles, and just have him explore the island, you know? Yeah. Bust up Badniks. Tails' his workshop allows you to use those pieces to make new weapons so that you hit harder or dig faster or whatnot. You know, gather up the Chaos Emeralds for new special powers or find ancient echidna hieroglyphics that give you special abilities. And just dig and climb and explore and run around and, oh, it would be amazing. <laughs> that sounds awesome. <laughs> I would play that. And heaven help me, I actually would play a full-blown version of Big the Cat's Fishing. <laughs> you know what? I actually would, too. Because, <laughs> you know, going through Sonic Adventure, when I wasn't focusing on actually, you know, catching the fish and was exploring the level and saying, holy mackerel, they actually, no pun intended, they actually, you know, built these levels to be explored. Yeah. And not just on one level, but you can dive down and seek out different catacombs or whatnot. 
that was really kind of interesting. It wasn't just the fishing. It was finding the right fishing spot yeah. and finding all these different things. And that's kind of a neat game. If they just took Big and plopped him into Sega Bass Fishing, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that and Cream's Chow Rancher. I want you just a straight-up Pokemon-esque digital life form raising sim. I don't care if it's, like, very basic cell phone game. Or that sounds like, like it would be a good cell game, phone game. Yeah, a really good mobile game. Or maybe a freemium thing to download digitally onto your console. Just something, anything. Just give me the chow. Huge garden, raising them up, all the different types. Get you a whole bunch of different character-specific type chow. Just, But I'm a big collector nut anyway, so... Yeah, Sega could really capitalize on chow stuff. Uh, it's kind of weird that they haven't. All right, let's go on to the next question here from Metal Skulk Bane. Uh, which Sonic game had the best story, in your opinion? Oh, let the flame wars begin. <laughs> I think the most engaging and most interesting of them was Sonic and the Black Knight. Wow, that was actually because, not the one I expected. <laughs> because... But I know people hate was, that game for... <sighs> the I controls think they, the left controls, something to be desired. Yeah, yeah. The music was spectacular. Yes. The music was very good. It controlled better than Secret Rings. Yes, which is not which hard, is but... Like saying a kick in the shin is better than rope burn, but, you know. <laughs> but story-wise, you know, right from the get-go, Marlena tells Sonic, you know, when you take down King Arthur, you will be the lowest of the low. You know, you will be a knight who forswore his oaths and took down a king. And Sonic goes, eh, can't be the hero every time. <laughs> and then the twist with Marlena being that she wants to preserve that moment in the book so that you never get to uh, Mordred's betrayal and the destruction of Camelot and everything. Uh -huh. That's a perfectly reasonable desire, you know, to stave off the, for the foregone conclusion that your entire story is going to end horribly. To preserve that moment of happiness and stability. And then Sonic's point is just as valid, is that that kind of life is not really life. And that's way deeper and more engaging than the convoluted kerfluffle that was Sonic 06. <laughs> and they don't really handle it in a heavy-handed fashion. They state their positions, and then you get that freaking phenomenal Crush 40 boss theme. And oh, I don't know, yeah. the, whole thing, the whole thing just really came across really solidly, really maturely. Um, in terms of a more general Sonic story, I guess, more conventional, mm -hmm. I maybe would say Colors. Because colors, it's, colors was fun, yeah. Colors it, had a it, good story. It doesn't, need, it doesn't do anything it doesn't need to. Right. Sonic and Tails show up to Eggman's latest scheme, and they stop it. And right. they have fun while doing it. I'm still old school and still like Sonic 3 and Knuckles' story. No, that's <laughs> there's fantastic. No, there's no text. There's absolutely nothing. nothing. The story is not given at all in the game. Story, uh, well, you see the story kind of play out, but yeah, you there's no text, there's no dialogue, nothing. But it it's still a really f just a fun story. It's kind of basic, but it really works. You really get a sense of how Knuckles shifts in uh from being sort of a rival over to being more of kind of a friend and working with you instead of against you. Exactly. So yeah, it's they did a lot with that game back in ninety three, ninety four. It's pretty I mean, pretty awesome. Just the simple sprite work of him stopping to think a second, gesturing, follow me, punches down a wall. Right. And then yeah. he's gasping for a breath on the teleporter, and then I don't know how you trigger it, but once he opens up the bridge on Sky Sanctuary, if you wait long enough for something, he will actually gesture for you to move on without him. And it's like, oh, yeah, you are the coolest character ever. I know, I know. Knuckles was so cool back in the day. I think kind of, they've really dumbed him down, and I mean... Literally and figuratively. And he, it, 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 yeah. He's, I'd like, you know, Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom Knuckles, Knuckles is fun, but I don't know. It just seems like uh, a missed opportunity with him, really. Mainline Knuckles, classic Knuckles, Legacy Knuckles, what's the terminology now? I don't know. Classic mainline Knuckles, line Knuckles. I suppose. Yeah. Uh, he kind of suffers from the Piccolo Syndrome. You know, he was the original rival to the hero. Yeah. And he technically hasn't devolved in power, it's just he's kind of been shuffled into the supporting cast. Yeah. At least he's not a babysitter. <laughs> not yet. Next question is from Betts. If Worlds Unite hadn't done the never happened thing, how would affect how would it affect Sonic and Mega Man's worlds? What would be different and what would be the same? 
obviously Shadow and the Mayor wouldn't exist anymore. Well, uh, that's not really a fair question because it wouldn't have never not done the. Mm. <laughs> what is that? A triple negative? I think so. It it always was going to be the cosmic reboot. Yeah, it has to be by its very structure and definition because we had a classic Mega Man crossing over with Mega Man X, and that can't happen. Just it can't straight up until you get to um, X over, but that's something else altogether or crossover, however you want to translate it. The mobile game that nobody liked. Point yeah. is, had some good music in it though. But other than that, anyway, go on. No. I mean, the point being, it never would have been in a position where it would be canon, you know? Yeah. So, it there is no scenario of what would have happened, because it wouldn't have. It was always going to get the Cosmic Reset button hit on it. <laughs> All right. Well, that answers that question. <laughs> <laughs> Maverick Indigo wants to know, can we expect any nuggets of information for Mega Man? I'm not expecting something as expansive as Lost Hedgehog Tales, but if Mega Man is really over, could you throw some bone on some plans that you would have done, especially with comic exclusive characters? I I don't want to talk about that kind of thing in depth because Mega Man's situation is completely and utterly different than the Sonic Reboot situation. Right. Uh, Not to get into details because I can't, but I'm still holding out hope that I'll be able to follow up on what I was doing in some capacity. Um, I don't know when, not entirely sure how, and it may be wishful thinking, but the door hasn't closed. So I don't want to start spilling all the secrets of what I wanted to do because I might still get a chance to trot those all out. So we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes. I just want more Quake Woman. <laughs> Just one more tempo. Yeah. If anyone, if anyone could do that, that would be really great. Especially if you could do it. But I mean, <laughs> at this point, throw in a game. I don't care. Just do it, somebody. <laughs> All right. Next question is from Unknown Shadow Six Seventy Five. My friend wants to know. Oh yeah, this is starting out really well. My friend wants to know. <laughs> My friend. No. <laughs> My friend wants to know if you uh, like the wild thornberries. There we go. Uh, Not especially. Not that I saw a lot of it, but I'm really, really not fond of that art style. And I guess this is a reference to Sonic 252, issue 252. I'm I'm having trouble recalling that one. Something in that one. Because Nigel is smashing. No, that... That's oh. more of a Tim Curry nod. Okay, Because yeah. he, he provided the voice of both King Acorn and Nigel Thornberry. Oh, and okay. <laughs> he has such a distinctive voice. So, no, that was that was a nod to Tim Curry, not to anything else. As it should be a nod to Tim Curry, because Tim Curry is rad. Oh, he's phenomenal. <laughs> he is, yes, he is. Now, that joke kind of took on a life of its own. Yeah. And I'll be paying... Little nod to that later on down the road, but no, it's it's primarily based around Tim Curry and Tim Curry's absolutely amazing voice. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I was distracted. <laughs> Tim Curry, it's understandable. I'm distracted. I'm always distracted by the Tim Curry man. He's he's mesmerizing. Not the Tim Chutney either, the Tim Curry. Right. Garrett wants to know, would the Sonic Underground comic have finally wrapped up the TV series, or was it designed with potential future comics uh, like a later universe arc in mind? For those who are listening who don't know, uh, for one of the Sonic Universe anniversary issues, we were originally going to do a finale to Sonic Underground, Mm -hmm. which, if you don't know, these kids these days... These kids these days need to get their Netflix in order. Uh, it was a Sonic cartoon that never really reached a conclusion. So um, the idea was that the issue would have been standalone, and it would have been this one big finale for Sonic Underground. What I, I had written it out to be this big love letter to the series, uh, little things for fans of the show to get, and just wrap it up. You know, give it some closure. Uh, for reasons I really can't get into, the rug was kind of yanked out from under us and we had to change our plans. But I, I will be detailing what I intended to do in Lost Hedgehog Tales, which is not dead. It is coming. You hear that? It's coming. It's coming. <clears throat> it's it's going to be here eventually. Just chill, chill, chill out, relax, 
I'm now in a Seems race a with George R. R. Martin to see whether Lost Hedgehog Tales or the next <laughs> Game of Thrones comes out. I thought you were I thought you were saying before you die. I thought you were gonna say it comes out before you die. I mean, like, man, that's kind of morbid. You still have you still have a while to go, dude. Uh, I don't know. The rate it is, it might be before the next Ice Age, but eh, we'll see. Hey, hey, we'll see. Yeah. John the Dreamer has a rather lengthy question here. It says, uh, I was floored when, while reading a Sonic Universe issue, Bean threw out what appeared to be a reference to a strong bad email. Me and my sister have used, excuse me, monstrosity, do you know the times? As an inside joke for years. I've caught dozens of other allusions to great dialogue moments from things all over the media, all over the media spectrum. Do you have a process when it comes to tipping your hat to great Great quotes, or do you just love certain quotes so much that you feel you simply have to give them their their homage in the heat of the moment? Or do you have a fervent goal to reference every single one of my favorite things on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> just to confirm, yes, that was a reference to the speed mail. Of course it was. <laughs> um, which is why Bean is so delightful, because I can throw any nonsense oh, yeah, out of his yeah. mouth and fits. Sticks um, too. I think you could probably get away with a lot of stuff with her. Yeah, to a degree. Less I don't want so her to than be mean, but yeah, don't want her to be too meme tastic. But um, I don't set out actively to use certain quotes. But if inspiration strikes when I'm putting it together, I'll fit it in there. Sometimes I get it in my head that it's a really funny or appropriate time to use the line. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. There's one line in particular that I really wish I could find the place for it, but it never works out. So I've cut it every time because it's too awkward. But are you familiar with Red vs. Blue? Oh, yeah. Okay. There was a bit in one of the early seasons where somebody says to Griff, you know, there's no I in team. To which Griff replies, well, there's no you either. So I'm not on the team, and you're not on the team. There's nobody on the f***ing team! <laughs> <laughs> Which is absolutely I do brilliant. remember that. Oh man. Yeah. <clears throat> but cursing notwithstanding, obviously that would be edited. I I just can't find the right place to use it, so no point in tossing in a quote if it can't be fun. I think my favorite reference of yours is still the uh, the Megas quote in what was it? Issue three of Mega Man or issue Issue three. The, very yeah, very early issue. Just uh, the way you used it, it was it was perfect. Well, that's the thing about the Megas. Okay, so for those, again, not no, no, put some context on this. Yeah. The Megas are a fan band who do lyrical covers of classic Mega Man music. And I think they rock. I think they've got some excellent wordplay in there. And some songs are just absolutely chilling in their renditions. Mm -hmm. And in one of the songs, it's told from the perspective of Dr. Light speaking to Mega Man about... You know, his creation and what he built him to do versus what he's doing as an individual. And I thought that provided a lot of very interesting insight into who and what Mega Man is and what his relationship is to Dr. Light. And I really couldn't think of a better way to put it. So I reached out to the Megas and asked for permission to quote at length the chorus of that one song. I think it's a message from Dr. Light. That would be the one, yes. Oh, I couldn't tell you what track it was based off of, though. Uh, uh, the... <coughs> it's like the weapon... No, it's the level select theme from Mega Man 2. That's what it there is. There we go. Okay. And... Which is like a three-second loop, and somehow they managed to turn it into this excellent, amazing song. It's my favorite song from it that is, album. It is outstanding. So, um, I can't remember which one of the Megas I spoke to, but regardless, they said, yep, you have our blessing. So I ran with it. Little did I know, he hadn't told the rest of the band. <laughs> so when the issue came out, it was a surprise to all of them. And quite thankfully, instead of being mad, they took that page, turned it into their icon for their official Twitter feed, and in their next album, which I believe was History Repeating Blue, Archie Comics got a shout-out in their thank you section. So, yeah, the Megas are pretty awesome to work with. They're really nice guys. Yes, I can definitely vouch for them. I've met them, met them all several times, and uh, had the pleasure of talking to them, interviewing them for one of my other podcasts, and they're phenomenal. So definitely go check out the Megas if you haven't. You really should. If you're a Mega Man fan, and you're a fan of video game music with lyrics, 
that's kind of a turn off for some people. But if you do like that, then head on over there. Head on somewhere. I, <laughs> I don't have their website on hand right now, but we'll, it's we'll, the we'll throw it. we'll throw, Is it themegas.com? That's kind of the what Megas. I thought. Okay. Thank you. Cool. All right. Surugi wants to know, as a fair amount of the Sonic game cast has voices now, what voices do you imagine for characters in the comic? pre- or post-reboot, or games that don't have established voices yet? We get this question a lot, don't we? Yeah, and voice, the voice acting one? Yeah, kind of. Well, that one was about Sonic specifically, the last one. Yeah, I suppose, but... Um, I don't have a good answer for most of that. Um, Rob Paulson has to be Antoine. That one oh, yeah. is just set in stone. We kind of went through a lot of... I guess we went through a lot of other characters after that, didn't we? Yeah. Uh, voice actress for Jane from Disney's animated Tarzan is Relic, just straight up. <laughs> uh, don't really have anyone else immediately in mind. Mostly the Sad AM cast, those who are still with us, taking over their roles again. But um, I don't really have set voice actors in mind. I do know that if we ever got to such a point where they were being voiced, I know I would want uh, Andrea Romano to be the voice director and voice caster on it because she does phenomenal work with the DC stuff. But uh, as for individuals, I can't think of anything that went off the top of my head. I was just trying to think of like one of my favorite voice actresses, Laura Bailey, putting her in as someone. But she's already the voice of Blaze, so which works because Blaze is awesome. And also the voice of Omo Chow, but we'll ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> And also the voice of Lucina. And the voice of the boss in Saints Row 3 and 4. Anyway, never mind. <laughs> she really does have that she... you know, powerful female role model thing clinched, doesn't she? Yeah, she does. She has a huge range, though. It's kind of amazing. Then again, a lot of voice actresses especially have a very large range. <sighs> Let's see. Next question is from Fritzy Beat. He asks, or they ask, where is Bivalve and what is he planning? Bivalve is nowhere and everywhere. Bivalve watches, Bivalve listens, but most of all, Bivalve plans. Do do do. I'm scared. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> I you am. should be. I am. I'm very scared. Spin asks, considering how far ahead you plan, what did you have in mind for the green biker dude on the off chance Mega Man X became a spin off book? Uh, this one I'll talk about. Um,. What I would have liked to have done was introduce him early on as a reoccurring supporting character. <laughs> one of the hunters alongside X early on. Of course. Not necessarily a high-ranking hunter, but, you know, a, a hunter all the same. Because X wasn't very high in the roster at this sort either. Yeah, right. So that when we got to the inevitable bike scene and he gets turned into gooey bits across the battlefield, it would actually mean something. Uh-huh. So that the assault at the very beginning of Mega Man X2 wasn't just, oh, ha, ha, they blew up the Green Biker dude. It would be you're making this desperate assault against the last holdouts of Sigma's Rebellion and actually make a character moment for X out of it. But that's a big if I ever get to write a Mega Man X comic. So if it so. happens, you know what to look forward to. Green Biker Death. <laughs> Did you have a name at all for him? I've tossed around a few, some that are like jokes revolving around motorcycles or various forms of the word green or just his, he goes by his initials GBD. I don't know. <laughs> that would have worked. Just call him GBD. Jago Man asks, speaking of names, have you ever considered naming the United Federation president like you did Commander Tower? I have, and I can't settle on a name that I like for him. And I'm always wary about Commander Tower because he is a Sega character, and therefore his name is whatever they say it is. Right. And I keep waiting for them to give him a name and thus cause trouble for me. But they haven't. And I don't want to set myself up... You know, I don't want to give my set myself up for potential double whammy. You know, here's President What's-His-Face and the gun commander whose name is now this, and I have to tap dance around a crazy retcon, but I don't know. Maybe I'll get around to it. He ha he doesn't really feature all that much. Yeah. Quantum Edge asks, are you setting something up for Metal Sonic in the future? Um, not within the context of the rebellious robot. 
because one, we already did that with Metal Overlord, and two, the Sega canon, the official word is that when Eggman repaired him, he got rid of that rebellious streak. So he is 100% loyal. Now, in the comic version, he's not as patient, we'll say, as the game version. The game version is unwaveringly loyal. Right. Comic version can get a little testy because Eggman is a doofus, but um, he's still 100% loyal. There isn't really a lot of room for rebellion because he literally can't. Red Hammer as Hey Ian, during the Station Square rescue story, why are the residents mixed with both humans and animal people? Creatively, whose idea was that? I, I guess mine. It was... How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> it was to show that the, the humans and Mobians lived side by side. It, on pre-reboot, there was a very big yeah. divide between humanity and animality and overlander and blah 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 so those scenes in particular were supposed to be a very easy and direct shorthand for we aren't doing that anymore yeah come to find out later that officially there's two separate worlds and there wouldn't be that intermingling but (laughs) it's the comic continuity we do things a little differently yeah are overlanders still a thing no no okay I didn't They're think so. Just humans. Okay, well, that makes a lot more sense. The <laughs> Big RG asks, "Who are you guys' favorite Sonic characters growing up?" You said guys. You're included in this. I, one. Yep, yep. Your your guys's. <laughs> That's what I'm, it says. And this I'm includes this includes like comic characters from that era and cartoon games, everything. Apparently, so. No, I've been talking enough. You go first. Uh man. I'm kind of putting on the spot here because I can't think. Um, I was always in it just for the Sonic, man. <laughs> but I guess when Knuckles came around in the Sonic 3 era, I definitely went on a big Knuckles kick and loved Knuckles for, for a little while. So Knuckles is always pretty cool. That's why I'm disappointed he's been sort of sidelined and just put on the supporting cast. Yeah, uh, Knuckles, go ahead. Knuckles was always my favorite, too. He was always right up there. Yeah. And he was the original rival. You know? Right. You try to spin dash him? No, no, no. He just knocks you away, son. Yeah, he's like the Proto Man to Sonic's exactly. Mega Man. Exactly. Exactly. Wow, what a comparison to make. <laughs> oh, they're both red and blue. Whoa. Oh my god. Tails just roll. No, they all roll. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. That's why I really I, I really did voice with a sore throat. Ah. 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 That's why I really did love it actually when uh he was paired up with Proto Man in the uh, was it the Sonic Worlds Unite Battles issue? It was mm-hmm. a, whatever one written by Aaliyah, which is an outstanding story, by the way. I was the best one out of all of them. Oh yeah, definitely. Second place, and we're, we're not just place. saying this, by the way, in case you're wondering. It really wasn't no, 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 a no. very good one. I yes, but second place, very close second place, going to Ryan Jampol's Sticks and Roll mm-hmm. story. Yes, that was amazing. Yeah, I I just I just like anything. I just like. Anything Jampol touches, it's, it's just it's just amazing. When you pair Ryan with Matt Hearns, all they do is produce gold. <laughs> this is true. This is that's true. why comics are so expensive these days because they're actually gold. Yes, that's they it. Rumble stilts king zing. You can comics. you mean we can blame them for five ninety nine comics? Yes. Ah, crap. All right. Well, them. you know what? I'll I'll take it if it means those two are going to produce literal gold. Then I'll take it. <laughs> Swing of Things, which is a great name. <laughs> great it username. Is, it is. This is someone who has nine posts, by the way. Man, welcome welcome to the forums. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry they're going away. <laughs> they're, they want to know, Mr. Flynn, I've been wondering for some time now who slash what is responsible for the French used in the comics. Since if I recall right, you said slash wrote slash etc somewhere that you really don't know the language in question oh i do not but i live with not. someone who does i do i, I do not parlay vous the francais Uh-oh. but uh <laughs> my wife Leah baker grew up in french immersion and not quebecois french but actual france french real french so she knows a thing or two about the language enough at least to kind of look at me 
from the side and go, what were you trying to say? I, I meant this. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> that That's not how you say that. Okay. You realize that this is yes. what this word means, right? <laughs> no. She knows enough to smack you and go, no, no, and th- bad. Knows enough, to, bad. <laughs> knows enough to prove that Google Translate is still not perfect. No, no, it is not. But it does have, it does do some, it does have some funny uh, results once in a while. It does, it does. I, it's amusing. There was a, actually there was a Russian fan on Twitter who was, I think, trying to say hello or ask something. And I, pfft, I don't know any Russian whatsoever. Right. I couldn't tell you the first thing about the acrylic alphabet, so I tried to put the simplest sentence into Google Translate and fire back, you know, thank you very much, or thanks for reading, or something like that. And I hope it came through right. <laughs> I mean, I, went and, I, took it, I took it in English, put it into Russian, put it back into English, and it looked right. So, I don't know. It probably came through fine. The point probably came across. I studied Latin because I knew it was a dead language, and thus if I got it wrong, nobody could correct me. <laughs> well, I guess that's a good uh, that's a good way to get around it. <laughs> it's not a good long term plan. I no, can tell you not. that. No, much. it's not. No, it's not. <laughs> that reminds me. Actually, this is kind of funny. This is not really related to anything, but it's uh, not related to anything we're talking about. Although I guess it would be Sega and Capcom related, so we could go with that. But um, years ago, in the 90s at some point, there was an album released of uh, Street Fighter 2 remixes with vocals. And this was an official Arrange album. And the opening track is an, is a remix of Reuse Theme by Takanobu Mitsuyoshi, a.k.a. the Daytona guy. <laughs> and... It is in incredibly broken and hilarious English. And uh, I learned a couple of years ago that it was actually, at the time, originally the lyrics were written out in Japanese, fed into an English translator. And this was an English translator in the 90s, an Ooh. internet English translator in the 90s. Good old babblefish. Yeah. <laughs> And what came back is the lyrics that are in the song. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> and I love the song. It's actually, it's really well done because Mitsuyoshi is a fantastic composer. If you don't believe me and just know his work from Daytona, which I think is excellent, but not everyone gets on board with it. Uh, go listen to his soundtracks for Shenmue or Sega Rally, which don't have lyrics and are amazing. So anyway, just wanted to throw that out there. I thought it was so pretty, pretty funny. So Melodin, we've had that, we've heard that name before. We have. They asked, "How did Sonic Rivals Two go down in the new comic continuity?" I ask because Sonic mentioned how he and Silver worked together to stop Ifrit when no such thing happened in the game, and Sonic and Silver were in different halves. I, I actually am completely confused because I never played Sonic Rivals 2. <laughs> but it was on the PSP. How could you not? Oh, crap. You're right. Man, I mm. really missed out. <laughs> uh, I think Rivals, the two Rivals games are kind of lost gems. I've heard they're actually good, yeah. I enjoyed them. It was kind of like, did you ever play the two-player mode in Sonic 3? Oh, yeah. All the time, yeah. by myself. A more robust version <laughs> of that, basically. And the writing in it was pretty good. And in the regular gameplay, uh, there are four separate storylines. Sonic and Tails, Knuckles and Rouge, Shadow and Metal Sonic, and Silver and Espio. And depending on which character you play as, there are minor tweaks in some of the stories. Like, Sonic and Tails have the same story, but if you play as Tails, you get a couple of slightly different scenes than Sonic. Yeah. And they don't overlap a lot. And more or less, Sonic and Tails have the most superfluous story because they end up doing one minor bit of good in the overall preventing the end of the world scenario, not realizing how very little they contributed overall. (laughs) Whereas you have this really interesting character moment where Metal Sonic rips a Chaos Emerald out of his own chest so that Shadow can escape back home, Hmm. which I just ate up, but... They don't really cross over a lot in yeah. the end game. So obviously the comic version is slightly different. Um, 
I don't have a beat by beat story planned out, but suffice to say, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Rouge, Shadow, Metal Sonic, Silver, Espio, they all contributed a little differently in the defeat of the Ifrit than in the game version. Retcons ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, retcon, retcon the games. Do it. Just retcon I, them all. I, th- I think the whole adaptation of Sonic Unleashed at this point should make it clear we're not being 100% faithful yeah. to the game canon. That's good, because if I wanted the game story, I'd just play the game. Like, come on. Come in. Come in. Come on, that's why, I was, that's why I was glad you, you really uh, added a lot of depth to the Mega Man adaptations. And then ad- ad- adapted games that were, like, nobody expected you to. <laughs> <laughs> Borvok asks Wow, with two posts even, man This this really brought some people out of the woodworks That's awesome Is there a trick to main tra- maintaining reader interest While sticking to the status, status quo Required by a license holder? I really can't read, this is bad Anyway, go ahead, answer the question <laughs> Answer the question <laughs> Um, It is a tricky balancing act Because your primary cast Can never really advance In terms of personality or character arc and they can never fully succeed because you always have to have sonic in conflict with dr eggman that's just how it is not so, always the book tried that for a little while it didn't work the, the book back then was under a very different set of circumstances right yeah the, the, everything was very different back then I, oh what I very much so yeah uh but from speaking from present perspective the illusion of change and progression comes from the extended cast. Yeah, definitely. You, ha- you have the Freedom Fighters, you have the friends around the world, you have the Egg Bosses, who all have their personal stories. And by the time you reach any conclusion with one of them, you've told numerous stories and spent multiple years. I mean, just since the reboot, we've had two years of world building, just straight world building where arguably all these characters have only introduced the first chapter of their arcs. So you come for the familiarity of Sonic fighting robots and beating the Fat Man, but you stay for the meat, which is the character development of those around Sonic. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Squeaky Boots 13 asks, if you were able to bring back one character from the old continuity, who would you pick? Oh, boy. <laughs> one just one. <laughs> one. Uh, that is a toughie. Yeah. Because so many of them were so much fun and so much potential. I almost want to say Shard, because he was a whole lot of fun to write. Yeah, but Shard, he's also, Shard was good. He's also kind of like Sonic in a way. Yeah. It's almost like having too much of a good thing. So there's Matilda, who broke your heart in her last appearance by breaking her arm. On a missile. Oof, yeah. And it's really too bad because I had, again, high hopes and long term plans for her, for the Baron. Scourge, wow, Scourge turned out to be such a crazy success story. You now, you take a concept that is, oh, I gotta choose my words carefully here, not the most robust in terms of execution, shall we say, mm-hmm. and really reinvent it. Give it a dual purpose, one that's really thematic and one that's almost meta-humor. You know, here you have a literal sonic recolor who is struggling with the fact that he is a sonic recolor. <laughs> Whereas you can look at it as, you know, Sonic is this very pure-hearted individual of incredible power. What if he had no moral compass? Mm-hmm. What if that kind of power was unleashed in a way that wasn't directed for the greater good? And both of those are entertaining and fascinating in their own ways. And I think because we approach them both with a degree of sincerity, I think that really resonated. But again, it's another Sonic. Falls in the same trap Shard does, so... Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could pick just one, because they're like my children. I love them all. I still miss Julie, Sue. I really do. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. I had more fun building up and tearing down Lee and Da, personally. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, I forgot about her. Yeah, Lee and Da, okay. Yeah, okay, I really do, I really miss Lee and Da, then. I miss Julie Sue, but yeah, Lee and Da. 
Just because she tried so hard mm-hmm. and was so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she got everything that was coming to her. Uh, yeah. yeah. Man. Uh, I think so, that's it, unless you have anything else you want to throw in here, Ian. I have thrown in everything I've got, yeah. including my voice, <laughs> which is now deep and resonating like the old radio announcers. It's very, 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 I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening to the Bumblecast. Please subscribe to the show and leave a rating and review on iTunes. Find more episodes at BumbleKing.com and KNGI.org. Bumblecast is copyright Bumble King Comics. Original music composed by Ken Coda Snyder, used with permission. Find more music from Coda at bc.s3m.us. Pay what you want for the intro theme. As part of the compilation album Noise Chan and Nugget Adventures in Chiptune at noisechanradio.bandcamp.com.